So on today's episode, Missy and I are talking about trust and surrender. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and uh, with your co-hosts, Chris and Missy, and uh, we are here once again to talk about ways that we can help you to find your inner peace and happiness in life, and what are some practical tips and ways that we can do that. And uh, today, we're uh, going to be talking about trust and surrender. So uh, talk a bit about how, what that means, why we pick it, um, and how we can use that to find our uh, inner peace, find our happiness. Um, before we jump into there, just another quick reminder uh, that if you do really like this podcast and you want to help support the podcast, uh, to go over to uh, patreon.com and search for On Finding Peace. And there you'll see uh, different membership levels and uh, just give us your donations and all the donations help to make this podcast even better than what it is. Yes, it probably could be better. So we can do that for you. You just got to go and help us out a little bit. Um, And for those that do, uh, take a look, but we will give you things uh, in response to you giving us things. So it's it's just a nice little uh, way to barter and help support us. So head over to Patreon. And we also encourage you to uh, drop us a line if you have any questions, comments, you know, about either improving the show, about show topics, um, or just questions. Uh, You know, feel free to uh, drop us a line. Uh, A couple episodes ago, um, I talked about addiction, and that was based on your questions. Um, and then that actually prompted other questions to come through on a email and some clarification. So, um, very grateful for that. And what we'll probably do is, uh, with, uh, at least the one that, um, came through on the email, we're probably going to make an episode about that. So, uh, um, more to come on that, but if you do have any comments, feel free to, uh, contact us and that's all on the show notes, um, how to, Get a hold of both of us. So, how are you? What's happening? I'm doing pretty good. Um, we are in the process of uh, buying and selling houses. So, uh, trust is definitely coming into play and surrender is definitely coming into play. If anybody knows what that process is like, it uh, can be smooth sailing. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? Huh? And uh, so that's, I've been doing that a lot lately and, um, and, and really tapping into trusting and surrender rather than getting my panties in a wad pretty much. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's gotta be tough though. You know, getting things together, trying to find the right place, packing everything up. Two houses, one, two houses sold, one house buying, of course, loans. Um, yeah, so it's been fun and juggling a full-time job and children and, and, you know, life, but, um, it's okay though. It's teaching me a lot about myself. So, uh, and I'm willing to look. Yeah. And, and that's important. And, you know, that's hopefully what, uh, the listeners get out of this because, um, you know, the busyness of life is just a fact of life. So, uh, that, yeah, that's important to know that, we can still get it all done and hopefully maintain our inner peace and happiness. You know, what I think finds, uh, gives me the best attitude about it is that I already know it's going to work out. Mm. You know, it's that like that inner knowing of just being like, okay, if I think it, about it too much and I worry about it too much, then I don't think that it's going to work out. But I know that no matter what, like, even if I worry, it's still going to work out. So why worry? You know, just brush that off, put that to the side and 
I have a saying that when you're standing in the tornado of thought, it's really hard to get out of that tornado. But, you know, if you kind of just see it and then you just let it go away, then it's just a breeze and, and it's, it's a lot easier. Uh, I like that. For somebody who loves weather and, and has chased tornadoes, uh, I kind of understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah so how about you? What's been going on with you? Well, not a, as uh, hectic, uh, I guess, as you, although I've <laughs> got work and, and all my other commitments and my uh, semester started up again. So the class that I, college class that I teach is uh, got me a little tired until I get used to back into the routine of yeah. uh, lecturing and grading and preparing lessons, all the stuff I love to do. But, um, you know, after a break, it's it's tough to get back into the groove of uh, the full-time job and the clients and the teaching. And, yeah, all, all of that uh, good stuff. But um, but I, I was, since our last recording, I, I did get away um, on a business trip. And uh, so that was good. You know, I mean, I like to go on the trips because you can do some good networking, but also do some learning. You know, and I think what's important is, uh, you know, that we always take the opportunities to learn and, and to recognize that, you know, there's always something we can learn. Um, you know, we, we haven't arrived, you know, I, even though, you know, you and I, you know, and we write, we do our workbooks, we talk and do all of this stuff that, that doesn't mean we got life figured out. You know, it's, so we're always on life's journey, aren't we? Uh, you know, you know what, <laughs> I love how I just picked that. You know, I was like, I, mean, I, I didn't mean to throw that in there and plug you, but I mean, it couldn't help but that's the truth, though. <laughs> you know, but, and and the more that we we see the information that shows up in our space and trust that it's teaching us something about ourselves, and that's what we get to work on and heal. Uh, the the better off that we are in in elevating where we're at in our lives. Yeah, and and it really helps, you know. I mean, you know, just I, I love traveling, and you know, traveling to a conference that does entail some bit of trust, you know, that we're going to get there safely and things are going to work out, and you know, hopefully, I'm going to learn something, and you know, maybe meet some cool people, and you know, you just never know, and you know, the the whole thing could fall apart, and you know. Well, so yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, but um, you know, we, we just you know have to move on, and like I say, you know, I mean, trust that you know if, if we're working the right thing, then we're going to get that in return. Um, yeah. you know, I, I was dealing with a, a client recently, and you know, the the client had said to me, you know, well, what if tomorrow is a bad day? And so I repeated back to them, okay, so what if tomorrow is a bad day? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, that would be horrible. Okay. That probably would be horrible if it's a really bad day tomorrow, you know, you know, because, you know, trying to get at this, you know, it, it, it we don't know for one and for two, if we're, if we're kind of working some trust and surrender, then, okay. I mean, what's going to happen or not happen is going to happen or not happen regardless. And, yeah. um, you know, we're going to get through it. And, and as I said, this client, you know, I've, have you had bad tomorrows? And they were like, well, of course I've had bad tomorrows. And I said, and yet you keep waking up on the next days and the next days that you're still sitting here. <laughs> Your success rate so far is 100%, right? Yeah. You know? But, and then that's, that's really like part of trust is, is being here, being present. And, you know, they say that's huge, but, you know, for me, it's, um, uh, it's about, I can feel the difference. Like when I'm worried or anxious, I'm trying to predict the future. I'm, I'm a meaning making machine. We all are as humans. And we're trying to like project what we believe our thoughts, but that's, that's not necessarily how it's gonna work out. We don't have any level of control over how things happen or when it happens. We think we do. And, but when we're here in this moment, God, we, we experience joy and love and happiness and all those wonderful things. And we get to be in that that flow of life rather than, you know, the the concern about the future or the, you know, the drudgery of the past. And, and I, I really I like, 
you know, I'm I sorry? like how you just said, you know, the, the flow of life, yeah. you know, because so often we're doing things to mess up the flow of life. Oh yeah. Resisting you know, it. Not, yeah. 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 And in trying to take that control, you know, where, I mean, if we want to take flow as like a stream or a river, you know, where we're trying to dam it or we're trying to, you know, change its course or drain it or, you know, whatever, but we're, we're, we're trying to mess with it because we think we have this control. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was actually talking with a client myself yesterday and, you know, I was like, how many eggs are you juggling right now? And he was like, a lot. And I said, well, what happens if one falls? And he says, well, really nothing. And I was like, exactly. So wouldn't it be so much easier? Like that's been my mantra lately is just like, let it be easy. Let me learn what I need to learn. Let me do what needs to be done and let it be easy. And, um, and I got that from one of my coaches, so I, I can't even take claim to fame on that one, but it really has been so much easier when I recognize, like, I don't really have control over it and it's going to work out and I've already won anyway. I'm set up to win, but I still have to navigate, you know, through the rocks, over the limbs, you know, and in that river flow is what I, you know, would call it. But you know, people, we don't think that when we're, when we're in it, we're in here, we're in our heads thinking that we've got to do something constantly. When life, I feel like is a lot more about being rather than doing. And, and that's where you have to trust. <clears throat> like, yeah. I'm not telling you to go sit on the couch and eat bonbons and think that, you know, like, you're just gonna feel good and, and be fit and healthy. That's not what I mean. But it's from the happiness, the joy, and the livelihood that you're going to create wonderful things. So that's where you need to come from in that being to go do things in life. Right. And if anybody from Bonbons is listening and wants to be a sponsor, <laughs> so we'll keep mentioning your product over and over and over. But um, hey, my mom owns a candy store, so like it's just in my head. I know. This, you know. I, I'm just messy. But uh, no, I, I think that that's, you know, the, the biggest piece is when we're talking about that control, you know, because for me, when I, I look at trust and surrender, and those have been, especially the surrender piece, but those have always been my lifelong struggle. I'm going to, you know, ever since I've been examining my life and trying to reflect on life, because one of the things that I realized is that in surrender and in trust, I have to give up control yeah. and I have to acknowledge. Fear. Yeah. I apologize. Oh no. Yeah. It, there it, is. There's a level of fear to that. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I'm giving up a, a, a control of something that, yeah, if I give that up, then somebody else or something else is controlling it. And therefore the fear, then yeah, what are they going to do to me? Yeah. You know, I, where's I, my life really going to go? And, and the thing about it that gets me is when we really, I think, I, I should say me, because maybe a lot of people don't think this way, but when it really boils down to it, what do I really have control over anyway? You know, uh, I mean, I, I use this as an example yesterday, you know, I could plan spaghetti for dinner. I could. And guess what? Uh, you know, my kid might come in and, and knock the jar of spaghetti on the floor or, you know, the, the, the sauce and, and then I'm not going to have spaghetti anymore. I might have butter and noodles, you know, like who knows, but. but uh, I've eaten butter and noodles for dinner. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it, it's the, the, the thought that we really do have control, like, you know, anything we, we don't. And so what are we really fearful of? Well, we're fearful of that reality. I, I think if we really think about it, I, I think part of the fear is understanding that, there's really not much that I do have control over yeah. because you, you're right. I mean, you know, just sitting here right now thinking about it, what do I have control over? You know, and I mean, I've got control over what I'm going to say next. I have control over if I want to turn off this computer and just go have spaghetti and butter, you know, those are my controls, but what do I really have control over? I mean, I don't have control over what's going to happen in the next hour, you know, I have a plan of how I would like the next hour to go, 
but I don't have control over that hour, you know, and tomorrow. You know, the, this is where, control over with tomorrow. This is where I think that that most of us suffer is because we are attached to that plan. And in that attachment, when it doesn't happen the way we plan for it to, then that's when we're upset or disappointed or bummed out. You know, it, it, it's like this house for me, you know, we are putting every step in motion and there is still always that possibility that it might not work out. However, I keep aiming for the goal. You know, I keep aiming and aiming and aiming. We're doing everything. We're setting it all in motion. Do I feel great about it? Absolutely. Could something crumble at the last minute? Yeah. And I still have my health. I still have my kids. You know, like I, I it's, it's not meant to be if it's not meant to be. You and, know, and that and, takes a lot of that surrender to say if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Oh, it's it's I will say that it's probably, you know, it's one of the most difficult lessons because I, I would classify myself as a controller. And, you know, I don't like when things are out of my control. And I notice that's when I get tagged the most. So trust and surrender has definitely been very prominent for me in these last few weeks because I'm learning like it's out of my hands. And it, and that's okay, you know, and, and I'm okay with the fact that it's out of my hands and I get to learn that it's what's tagging me about it. You know, where's that showing up elsewhere in my life that I get to really look. And then when I see it and I change it, it actually doesn't bother me anymore. If that makes any sense at all. Yep. Because one of the things that I look at, and, and like I said, that this has been difficult for me my entire life, so I, I don't flippantly just talk about surrendering my control. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in, in what you're saying, there's a lot of freeing elements to it. You oh, know, which for me, I always figured, well, if I'm controlling things and I feel that I'm in control, therefore I am free because I could do whatever I want because I'm in control. Yeah. But that's really not true because in that act of trying to control things, I'm losing my freedom and filling it with anxiety and stress Amen. over trying to control things that might go out of control. Yeah. You know, so yeah, if, if I got something planned out just right and then the weather changes or something else pops up, now I, I have stress and anxiety because it's not going the way I plan. I've got to come up with a plan B or I got to try to pull things together. Where is really there such insight into your mind right now? I can hear it. <laughs> like I'm getting stressed and anxiety just listening to it. So. Oh, li live up here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been there, done that. I get it. <laughs> but, and, and, you know, that's, you know, when you talk about life's journey, I mean, that, that's where life's journey came about. Yeah. You know, what was a number of years ago when, when I had to surrender and, and let that stuff go. Because prior to that, it was all of that anxiety. I mean, that, that was life. Well, he, it, here's the thing. To me, it's like you can't you can't get it wrong. So I I've, I love Abraham Hicks. I'm sure maybe some of your listen, listeners. But that's the truth. Like when you look at it, it doesn't matter how much worry and stress and anxiety you've put into it. It always, always, always works out. Like it might not work to our specifications, but you can still get to where you need to go. And you don't have to do all that, like make life easy for you and let, let that kind of stuff go. Yeah. You know, release all of that need and want for control, you know, and, and that really comes from a, a deeper sense in, inside a person, you know, mm -hmm. that for those of us who, who feel that that becomes really that, that crutch to, being unsure of what it's like to live in freedom, meaning yeah. I'm not going to worry about how this exactly goes down or what I have control over, or what I don't have control over. You know, I, I'm just going to kind of live my life. And uh, I, I think that unknown piece just scares everybody. So you got to go back to, no, no, I've got to control it because if I control it, I know it. But I, I also... Yeah. And, and I also want to add to that. You need to know that it's a muscle. You need to know that 
you don't just like all of a sudden stop being in control and you and you just can let go. You really have to build that muscle up just like you would if you're going to the gym, you know, you're you're working on things, you're going steady pace and you you just make yourself aware of it over and over again and you can start to curb your your behavior. It's not going to happen like that. We are impatient as people <laughs> and I say we and I'm pointing at me because mm -hmm. I, I I want it to happen now. This is this is the way that controlling is. And I got to learn patience with that surrender and trust, you know, and it's it's challenging. It is challenging, but it's freeing at the same time. Like you just can let go and relax and recognize that it feels so much better when you're not like trying to dot all the, you know, dot all the I's and cross all the T's. And, and I would encourage the, the listeners to, you know, reflect on this a second to really understand what that means, where it's freeing, you know, because I, I know for me, when I was in the midst of all of the type A stuff and just running, 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 controlling, controlling, it would have sounded so bizarre to me to say that you will be freer and happier if you just let it all go. Yeah. Because I, like, I wouldn't have believed it because it would have been like, well, who's going to take care of it then? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to be it worried happens. about what's happening to it. Yeah, it happens. Somehow it just <laughs> happens. That's the trust and surrender. You know? Well, yeah. You know, the, there was a, a great, um, and, and I've used this before, but uh, I think it's uh, apropos now of um, St. Francis and um, is a Christian saint of the 11, 1200s. But he gives up everything in poverty. And, and he says that in giving everything up, frees himself to focus on what's important in life. And... What I thought was interesting is one of his stories was one, one of his followers goes in one day and, and says, you know, is it okay if we, as a group, if, if we all get a book and the book can help us to learn more about God and, you know, uh, prayer and all that. And Francis, his answer isn't a no, but he says, but here's the problem if we get a book. If we get a book, we have to have some place to put the book. And if we build a building to put the book in, then we're going to have to take care of securing that building. Because when we're not around, what if somebody goes in that building to find out what's in the building and takes our book? And then if we secure the building, somebody might still find a way to break in the building. So we might have to hire some people to stand guard of that building. And at this point, what are you focused on? <laughs> right. It doesn't seem like it's fun at all. <laughs> like yeah. that, that's, I mean, it, and really that's how a lot of people, a lot of us are in life is that we're, we're so focused on everything else except for what really matters, you know, what? and there, there are a lot of, I feel like there is a big shift going on where everybody is starting to recognize more, you know, what really matters and yep. being present and, you know, and you're starting to see people do uh, social media fasts, you know, which is great because gosh, it's so nice to not, like I don't have notifications on my phone and it is just so nice to not have that interruption. And if I want to go on Facebook, you know, you know, they, they actually time it now, not to digress, but they have a timer to show you how long you're on it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it, it's very eye opening to see how much time that you actually spend doing those things. And it's like, is that really what's important? Just to mm -hmm. see what so and so and so and so is up to. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great to follow family and friends really yeah. is I'm not an anti social media person. But at the same time, like, I want to spend that time with my kids. I want to go make memories with them. I want to, you know, I want to be there for them and know that 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 they know that they have a mom that they can count on and that when I get old, they can take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep your kids happy now for one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be very good to my kids. I'm so good to my kids. <laughs> but, 
You know, and, and that was really Francis' point, you know, where, you know, some people look at that story and say, so he's anti-education. You know, um, that's that's not the point of that story at all. You know, but yet it's that thing that, you know, once you do one thing, that thing can start to control you. So if you don't have that thing in the first place, then that's not an issue. And, and that's how we look at, at the thing with the trust and the surrender. So, you know, if I can give up that control, in mm-hmm. other words, like give up that book, you know, I don't need that security person or that alarm system or that building or, you know, my mind doesn't have to worry, is that book safe? I don't I, have to work. I, I just came up with a listener challenge, I think. Uh oh. So I, I was, uh, I did a, a leadership training last year, most impactful time in my life. And um, when we would go, they would ask us to give up things. So, yeah. okay, you know, obviously, no, no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no sugar you know, things like that. So, so I'm not asking everybody to give up things like that, but what has you like, think about it and really be honest with yourself. What has you, is it, is it the coffee? Is it the cream? Is it the sugar? Is it the cigarettes? Is it the soda? You know, what is it that has you and go a week without it and see how free you feel. I mean, you're going to be a little upset at first. You're going to be like, mm, you're crazy. I'm not giving it up. But don't take the coffee away. <laughs> yeah. After a few days, you're going to be like, oh, I don't even want that anymore. And, you know, it is, it's really freeing to see, does it really have you? You know, because we say all the time, oh, I can give it up. I can quit. I don't need, yeah, I will be the first to tell you carbs are my friend. I love carbs. I, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to give it up all the time. They have me. They have me. And I know that. So, you know, I'll do it with you. You know, as soon as this podcast comes out, give me a week and I'll do it with them. So, yeah. So that, that sounds like a good listener challenge that, you know, what what are the listeners willing to part with for that week? Because it's something that is becoming the most important thing in their life. And let's see how we can back you on that and maybe do trust the and surrender. Trust the process and surrender. Surrender. Because really, you know, one of the things, and again, this isn't my original thought, but, you know, somebody has said that you know what's most important in, in your life by the things or the people, but, you know, by the things that you think of last going to bed and first waking up. Yeah. You know, what are those last thoughts, those first thoughts that gives you a clue on what's really important to you? Yeah. And without judgment, what we can say is, do you want that to be the most important thing in your life? Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I without judgment in a sense, you know, I'm not going to say you're right or wrong for, you know, thinking what you're thinking. Sure. But is what you are thinking really what you want as the most important thing in your life? I can remember a time that my to-do list was the last thing I thought about and what I had to do the next day. And then the first thing in my mind that when I woke up was that to-do list, there was no peace in that for me. Mm -mm. And yeah, I mean, I didn't, didn't, didn't fall off peacefully to sleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and I was, I was bogged down with it. So, you know, thank, thank God I'm over that time frame in my life, but when you said that, it was like, yeah, in that time frame of my life, that was that was exactly where I was. Like, I had so much to do, and I couldn't stop thinking about how it was all going to get done. Yep. So, very good point. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that's really what's important with that trust and surrender, because it once we do that and, and we give up the control of things we don't have control over anyways, you know, we're not giving up control of things we can control, you know, like, you know, our, ourselves and our behaviors. Th- these are things that we we have no control over anyway. So yeah. give those up. But once you can surrender that and trust, you know, within that process or your higher power, or whatever it may be. 
that's now going to help you to focus on well, what's really important in my life. Yeah. And when, and that's, you just said it too, the, the trust and surrender part is, is to me, trusting that intuition, that higher power and surrendering that it sees the bigger picture. Like my little narrow human vision sees what I see and yeah. thinks I know what's best, but I don't know as much as they know, you know, or, you know, higher power knows. And that's what you get to trust. That's what you get to surrender to. I mean, you're here because there's a reason and we don't always know what that is. Yep. But, you know, that that seems to go along with, you know, for when you're growing up and, you know, you, your parents may say to you, look, you just have to trust me, you know, that, that I know what's best, you know, yeah. and, and that's that's i think what we're talking about you know is sort of life of the child versus the life of the parent they do know a bigger picture than we as a child knows yeah. so to be able to say look you've just got to trust me that i really know what's good for you right now based on everything in their world view which is much larger than the kids world view but as a kid you don't understand that so you want to maintain that control over you know this but you really don't get it but if you just sit back and trust things will be okay and and i think that's kind of what we've been talking about this time absolutely i love it i love the way you phrased it and that meant that way too because it's perfect it's absolutely a perfect uh depiction so me going back to childhood and being like a child is a perfect depiction of absolutely yeah yeah Don't let it go to your head now. Come on. <laughs> I, I was just trying to see where we were with this. So, you know, um, but uh, yes, in all humility, I, I, I will <laughs> look at childish um, ways. And uh, <laughs> did that just come out of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think, you know, in, in looking at that, you know, I mean, how can we be more childlike and not childish you oh, know, okay. and, and just have that kind of innate trust that, yeah, I, I kind of have to trust because I really don't have a choice, you know, and, and if knowing that your parents have been taking good care of you, you know, you, you can, can you can trust that they will without really thinking about that I need to do anything. You know, and, and we lose that as adults, you know, um, but how can we in some ways regain that, you know, childlike trust that things will in the end be OK? Well, I think a good point to make would be that that's when we created it. Like when we were children, we made up the meaning for every event and every every story we created. So there we do have the ability to look back and say is that really accurate now is that really serving me now so that we can bring back that childlike wonder and trust yeah. you know you you have the ability to change your mind at any time <laughs> that you want yes we do so. and, and thank you for emphasizing that yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when people feel stuck, that's one thing I, I'm always saying, then, then change what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I bet you the biggest question you get is how. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's a tough you one. trust and surrender. That's how. <laughs> you know, part of me just wants to say, just do it. You know, but then I'm reminded of the parent phrase because I said so. And, yeah. and I never liked that then. And I don't want to tell my clients, well, just yeah, do it. Say didn't sit well then for any of us, I don't think. <laughs> no. But, but in the end, though, that's really what I want to say, you know, yeah. to answer that question. So how do you just change your mind to a, a different perspective or a different way of looking at things? Honestly, if I'm going to be just flip about it, it's just do it. You know, you know I, I have to I have to add in right now that I think that and of course, I'm female, so I could be completely wrong. But I'm not I do that. <laughs> well, I do believe that men have the ability to do that way easier than we do. You know, at least that's my perception. Like I said, I'm female, so I really don't know. But 
But, you know, I think that you guys have this little switch and it just goes, Psh, okay, I'm not going to think about that anymore. And we go, but it's connected to this and that and this and that and this and this and that. So how do I unconnect it from all of that just to turn it off? And, and, uh, not that you guys, I mean, you're wired differently than, than us. Obviously you're not, you're not hairy women. So, but at the same time, you, you guys are, you have that finality in your thought process that like, okay, no more, I'm done with it. I'm over it. And we tend to dig that hole and look up out of the rabbit hole. Like, like, Hey, can you throw me a line or something? Help me out. So. I, I think in, in general that there's a lot of truth in that. And, and, you know, guys can hate me or whatever, but I, I think that's because there is a different level, generally speaking, of maturity. Um, you know, I think in, in some ways the guy can be a little more on the childish side and just like, well, I'm going to flip that off and move on to the next thing and not even, you know, worry right. about it, deal with it. Um, but I, I, I would still say even in a complication of everything is wired to everything else, um, so maybe it's not the factor of just turning the switch off and moving on. Maybe we have to turn off the switch and cut a couple of wires. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, so, you know, to me, again, it, it, it's very possible to do. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. That muscle memory again. Yeah. And it's that muscle memory. Yep. Little at a time, you know, like you said, you disconnect one wire. Next thing you know, you walk over to the next box, you disconnect that wire. And it might take a month or so to do that. But you you just keep working on it. You do a little at a time. Yep. Because you'll notice the, the more you do it, the more freeing you're going to feel. You know, so even for anybody listening right now and saying, well, they're, they're just full of it, that there's no way you can be more freeing by, you know, let us go. Like, look, I, I got you because I, I, I was there. I was one of you. But mm -hmm. it is true. I mean, the more you do it and the more consistently you do it, you are going to feel more and more free. And it may not take you so long anymore because you, you want to cut all those wires. Um, yeah. you know, you, you get to a point where you, you don't want the switch on or the, or the wires connected to things you, you just want it done. Um, yeah. but yeah, work the process, give yourself time to begin to feel that. Absolutely. I would have to say that you can't move a mountain overnight, but you can one dirt pile at a time. That is true. That yeah. is true. So on that note, any parting thoughts? The best thing that you could do is just relax and and just let it happen. Let whatever is happening happen. That's the trust and surrender. If we stop digging our heels in, you know, when it comes to whatever life pre presents us, we, we remove the resistance. Trust and surrender will be so easy. Totally agree. Totally agree. And I want to encourage everybody for the challenge. We're, we're serious with the challenge. So this is almost becoming a pattern here. You know, yeah. if we keep this up, it's almost becoming a pattern. So for those of you who didn't listen to last episode, well, go back and listen to last episode for a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons is we had a listener challenge in the last episode, and that was the first time you and I co-hosted. It was, absolutely. And now in the second episode where we're co-hosting, we come up with a listener challenge. Uh-oh. Sounds so <laughs> we, we either have to like think about stopping that now or or this is a thing that we're, we're going to keep moving. You know, so, here's the thing. We want to get people involved. Exactly. We want people to give us feedback. We want to we want them to to really find some worth into this. And without that little bit of stretch, that little bit of challenge and actually putting yourself to it, you know, you're just going to sit in your comfort zone. So if you're interested in, in growing and finding peace and, and doing those kind of wonderful things to help elevate yourself, then I think that that's, that's what we can do. We could give them a challenge. And here is your challenge. So <laughs> if you are interested in last week's challenge, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to go listen to that episode. But in this yeah. episode, we have the challenge to try to figure out what is it that's really kind of controlling you in your life. And are you willing to give that up for a week? Let us know what it is and I'll 
see what it is before I commit to what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it from me, carbs. I'm giving up carbs and I'll do it for a week from the day this podcast goes live then for a week and, and we'll report back on that the next time. Hopefully with, you know, with, you know, maybe a little slender, more, you know, whatever. <laughs> It'll feel good for me. I'll get more rest and I know how it works. So, well, I have been in the last couple of weeks trying a lower to no carb diet. So oh. maybe I'll just keep doing what I'm doing right now. But, uh, but if, if a, a listener wants to challenge me, then, then I'm willing to look at it. Do it. Do it. Somebody do it, please. <laughs> Remember, I can't be the only one here to pick on Chris, okay? Trust and surrender is, is the thing that's so difficult for me. It's always been difficult. So <laughs> I'm showing all of you right now. I'm 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 showing all of you right now that I'm still dealing with trust and surrender. <laughs> hey, we're all on the path. We've all got our process. We you know, you know where you know you're just a little bit different than all of us. That's all. There you go. Well, thank you again for a wonderful uh, episode and uh, you know definitely appreciate all the listeners for um, you know taking the time to listen and again drop us a line work the listener challenge um, or at least just share us with uh, some of your friends uh, you know share us on social media and you know let other people know about us and um, hey we'll see what the next listener challenge is going to be because I don't know what it is so yeah. And it wasn't planned again. No, it wasn't. The last <laughs> one wasn't planned. This one wasn't planned, we swear. Um, and actually, one last dig for Patreon. One of the giving levels on Patreon gives you backstage access to what we do and how we do what we do. And if you had that backstage access, you would have known we didn't plan that. So <laughs> if you want to trust us, Make your donation, get backstage passes, and you, you'll get to see what I'm talking about. That's All right, right, cool. Well, have a uh, very mindful time, Missy, and, and I, I wish the, the same to all of our listeners. Yes, I do too. Have a great night.